I'm going to talk a bit about uh, how to that we have to break the rules uh, to get the things this uh, going. So we have a little more action here. Uh, I am a politician here in Region Skåne uh, for the Center Party, and I'm also uh, the head of Skånes Yrkeshögskola. That's a vocational education. Uh, and in the board of Malmö Yrkeshögskola. And been, I've been trying to start an education in mobile health for the last three years, but our uh, government authorities do not understand the need. Uh, <laughs> so that's one of some of the reasons I'm here. And in Region Skåne, many of the things that Marianne talked about are things that I've been part of uh, getting going. Uh, so the e-health strategy, etc., are things that I've asked to uh, the rest of the politicians to start. And uh, some of the things have... Uh, Gotten away, so that's good. Uh, AI, we've decided that we have to start using AI as well, uh, so that's good. So, what is the future of healthcare? Any suggestions? Good, perfect, perfect. Do you think it will be an app? <laughs> nah. Well, most people think it's quite digital, but according to Region Skåne, it is not. Um, so, we have this uh, thing called the future of healthcare in Region Skåne. They are working with buildings. Uh, and of course, we're going to need buildings in the future as well. There's no doubt about that. But the problem is that we've actually sat down, we've taken politicians from all parties to get together to talk about how the future of healthcare in Skåne is supposed to look. And this is what they are discussing. They are talking about the physical, uh, we call that, <laughs> uh, frames, the physical uh, buildings, instead of talking about what's going to be in it. And perhaps just as important, what is going to be outside of it. Uh, and this uh, has a lot of consequences. Uh, for instance, this means that we can talk about how to build tunnels from here to there, beneath the ground. You can see them. Very nice. Very expensive. Cost billions of uh, kroner. But we do not talk about how to build APIs, which connects all our data. And that is, for the future of healthcare, is probably more important in very many ways. So you have a perspective that is based on the physical world, which is quite natural because that's where we've been all, all along and healthcare is very physical. If you don't believe me, I'm, I have a cold right now and it feels very physical. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's not strange, but the problem is that the consequences are that we spend our money on very, very expensive things based on the thinking of today or yesterday instead of basing them on the solutions of tomorrow. Uh, so, what is the problem? This is red tape, in case someone didn't get there. So like <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I have to talk one more thing about this. It's because uh, you, br you brought up uh, heart attacks. Uh, this is a perfect example of that. We have pacemakers, we have some of the best doctors in, uh, in, uh, in the world uh, using pacemakers, uh, or not using it, but working with it. <laughs> they <laughs> might use them as well, I don't know. Uh, and they have uh, been forerunners in the entire world, making it possible for patients to go years without having to see their doctors, when many other countries you have to see your doctor every three months. For instance, in the US it has been like that, especially because in the US the doctors get paid for every visit. Uh, also a driver for uh, many things. Uh, but these are monitored digitally. The data is uh, sent to Region Skåne, so the doctor can see how the patient is doing. The system is there. It's not a problem. The problem is there is no efficiency for Region Skåne. Why not? Because the data that comes in, they have to take that data and put it into our systems manually. So this is an in incredible, incredibly uh, good example of what the problem is. So this costs Region Skåne and uh, the healthcare system a lot because we could have had an, automa an automatic system of healthcare for people with some of the most serious uh, problems, heart problems, but we have chosen not to because we do not want to build an API, because our IT department chooses not to build an API or open up for it. Uh, and in, in my opinion, that is a more pressing problem than that in many ways, uh, even if we need the, the buildings as well. Uh, this also means that at the moment we have uh, between the primary care 
and the hospitals when you, you, when you have to push data between them. In the primary care, uh, so like your normal doctor, uh, they put data about you into the system. Then you have to go to the hospital. They print out your information, then put it in, a, then put it in an envelope. Then they send it to the hospital where they open the envelope. They put that data into a system and you get healthcare. And then they take your data, print it out, send it back uh, 8 million times a year. That I've, I've counted like 15 minutes for each transaction. That's 1,000 employees a year. So there is no other problem that is more pressing. And that is one connection between two systems. And we have around 600 systems. So whenever people say that we lack employees, we do not. They just do the wrong things. Uh, so what is the problem? Red tape, for instance, that we... Uh, Basically, this, this sector is lacking compared to all other, other uh, sectors. And that is basically, there's one reason that is good. Uh, one good reason for it is that our decisions have to be evidence-based. So we cannot just test things to the same extent as many others. So we have to be a little more careful because people might die. So a little careful is fine, but that's not the big problem. The big problem is that there are very strong hierarchies. There are strong organizational cultures. Uh, and... Basically, we are preventing innovation through regulation. Because whenever, when we open up our primary healthcare, we tell to the private companies that are in there, you have to deliver healthcare the same way that we do. Otherwise, you cannot be allowed to deliver healthcare. So that means that now it has taken, like, Min Doctor, you, uh, Malmö company, uh, have had the access that you can uh, use a doctor through online uh, conferences. Um, they have not been allowed to sell healthcare to Region Skåne. Now it's getting changed, but the basic problem is that they, of course, should have been able to provide healthcare. And I have asked the ruling parties why we can't do that. And they say, no, we have to start with the physical world. So you have to build a healthcare uh, center to be able to uh, provide healthcare. Now it's changing. So, I mean, this is just one of uh, many issues where you have to, like, the decision making is based on the old physical world first, instead of looking at how we can provide the best healthcare today. Uh, and that is a big problem. So, then there's the big problem of perspectives. This is Region Skåne's perspective. This is Skåne, and a little bit more. <laughs> uh, Denmark. The, the accent, the accent, if you didn't understand that, is from there. Uh, these are our primary healthcare centers, including the private ones. Uh, I believe it's including the private ones. 156 primary healthcare centers in uh, Skåne. Then we have 10, 11 hospitals as well. Uh, that is what is healthcare to a large extent, according to Region Skåne. Uh, and that is what we make our decisions based on. And that is how we, when we discuss healthcare, this is what delivery of healthcare is thought of as. And the problem is that, as we have moved, then this is Region Skåne's healthcare. This is what we have to understand, that I will be able to receive healthcare all over the world. And I want to receive healthcare all over the world. So if I live in this little spot, as I do now, and I moved and I have a day travel or a week's travel to Stockholm, I will expect to be able to get my healthcare there as well via the same channels. I don't expect to be able to, to have, to, I don't expect to have to find another channel for my healthcare. And if I have the same perspective as Region Skåne, I will not be able to because I'm outside the system. That is their perspective, I am outside the system. But the problem is that I am not outside me. And for me, I am my perspective. Uh, <laughs> and that is a big difference. Uh, so that means that you can take uh, all the big healthcare, uh, like Capio, as an example. They will have healthcare there. Of course they will. So why should I choose Regan Skåne? If I know that I can choose, health, choose a healthcare provider that exists in France, in Germany, in Stockholm, why should I choose one that says that when I'm outside of Skåne, I am not in their system? That is one of the perspectives that I lack in the in the world of today when it comes to Regions Corner. Uh, and it also comes back to what you were talking about, the data. 
Today, of course, this is healthcare. So whenever I see someone, their data is given to Regenskorn. It says that it has to. The problem is that when I choose someone else from somewhere in the world, perhaps if I'm Polish and live here, perhaps I want a doctor in Poland who can speak Polish, why should I give my data to Regenskorn? Why? I can pay for them myself so that I don't have to wait in waiting lines in Skåne. That's not a problem for me. It's 300 kroners, not a problem if I get healthy quicker. So why should I give my data to Region Skåne? Region Skåne hasn't paid for my health. So that is a problem that we will face if we do not make our uh, health care open to the entire world. Uh, and this also means that <laughs> when it comes to uh, all standards, etc., we cannot develop our own standards. We cannot think out our own solutions. We cannot believe that we, the 30,000 employees working in this little part of the world, has the best answers to healthcare when the entire world is thinking about it. This also means that ideas such as, can we have, uh, is it okay to have profit in healthcare? Uh, well, you can choose that it is not okay. You can frown upon it, that's fine. But if someone over here, has a good solution, then they will not come to Region Skåne and say, I think Skåne, you should have it for free. You should have it without me making money. Of course they will not. And as the world accelerates, right now, if we are one step behind, which we are digitally, digitally, definitely, uh, then perhaps we are like, this is a step, that's fine. But as accel the acceleration of technology and speed, then suddenly uh, this is a step and you are further behind. And then if in, th in three years, when acceleration has gotten in even further, over here is what, one, wha is, what is one step. So which every, with every year and increasing, increasing speed of techn technological acceleration, we will, with one step behind, be much further behind than we are today. That is the consequence of speed. Uh, and that also means that when you choose to not take the newest or the best solution this year because we have to develop our own solution, which will take three years at least, then our lagging will be increasingly big. And that is, one, that is the big problem with the way we, so we solve things today. Uh, so, that's not me. <laughs> He's much shorter than me, otherwise more or less. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you were talking about IBS. I would like to talk to you about BS. Uh, because that's what we hear a lot. It's about, it cannot be done. It is a mission impossible to change things. But it is not. It is not a lack of money. It is not a, a consequence of the way we, or we organize. It is not a problem because of legal structures, mainly. There is a lot of legal structures. I've asked SQL, the Swedish com co municipalities and uh, regions, uh, like common organization, which rules we should break on purpose. Because I do believe it is time to focus on the right rules to break, also legally. Because we cannot continue to just wait. Because as I said, when we wait now, as we, as we uh, get further along on this road, Every year we wait will be an increasingly big cost, especially when you come to McKinsey, as you talked about. Uh, and so the mission impossible does not exist. We just have a courage problem to a large extent and a, a priority problem. And that is a political problem. Nobody else can decide for it. And now the last year has seen a lot of improvement. So I'm getting more and more, more, more positive, uh, which is nice. Uh, it's always nice to be more positive than negative. Um, where the high quality we have in Swedish healthcare can be utilized because we open up our systems to the world. Uh, because the big problem today is not the quality of Swedish healthcare, it's the low access to Swedish healthcare. So we have high quality but low access in many ways. Uh, and what digitalization does is granting access is one of the big purposes and uh, the, the way that digitalization works. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and I do believe that Sweden can lead and we should lead, as you are talking about. Uh, so we can, but we do not. Uh, and in many ways, I would absolutely suggest to you that you talk to your politicians about that it's time to break the rules. Uh, so 
we need a little more wrecking balls. They can have more clothes on. Uh, I had five minutes to find the picture, so <laughs> <laughs> five seconds, basically. Uh, so we have to break the laws when it comes to organization. We have to break the laws when it comes to uh, law. When We have to come, uh, break the rules when it comes to tradition. And that is the only way that we can actually uh, uh, get to this new and promised world as it is. Because if we continue to do as we do today without breaking the ways we work, we will never, ever get ahead of the rest of the world because the world right now is moving a lot faster than we are. Thank you very much.